budget represents more than numbers on a piece of paper. What we intend to do is put together a restructuring plan that will enable us to invest in ourselves and our human capital uh, and, and in the state. We have to fulfill the basic functions of government. This is not an argument about big government versus small government. Uh, it's way past that. This is an argument about can we provide the basic services to see that children are fed, that people are housed, that health care uh, necessities will be met, and that you can get a job with a future and to be able to retire with a measure of dignity worthy of what we expect of each other in Hawaii. At the very time where, where we're bringing ourselves back into balance, we are moving forward with a recovery that moves us forward on energy independence, on food security, on, on environmental sustainability, on educational excellence, and, and, and an, an economy that is not just recovering, but actually providing a foundation for, for prosperity into the future that we can count on. First of all, this is a multi-year financial summary that highlights where we currently are as a state government financial-wise. The important numbers here are towards the bottom. In the current fiscal year, we're showing estimated $71.6 million shortfall. And then going into the next two fiscal years, $410 million in the next fiscal year, $361.62 million as deficits uh, above the current uh, fiscal year for each of those bienniums. Now, this is a high-level review of the revenues and expenditures for the entire state government and where we're seeing the matching deficits. The proposals are broken out into two different areas at the top line. If you see where the shortfall is, those measures that are identified as revenue adjusting measures will deliver about $232 million in the first fiscal year, $277 million in the second. Matched up with proposed measures that would reduce expenditures, would deliver about $192 million in savings and just about $212 million in savings in the second fiscal year. What I'd like to point out here is that this is a balanced approach in all of the measures. We're not asking the public or your state government to take severe cuts or to generate severe revenue increases beyond what the other side is asking for. The revenue proposals and the expenditure proposals are both balanced in their weight. Admittedly, they are equally as severe and significant, but they are balanced. We are working with the legislature on every single measure as they are amended or revised to address what revenues can be delivered or what amendments to the bills will result in what expenditure savings. Towards the bottom half of the page, we're showing where we're holding as reserves. The cost, uh, the Council on Revenue's estimated projection at their last meeting in December raised the estimate by 1% to a 3% rate of growth. If that rate of growth is sustained, it would deliver, in essence, about $50 million in each of the next fiscal years. Coupled with that, the current balance in the rainy day fund, which is about $46 million, and then in the hurricane relief fund, where there's about $117 million. Now, for each of these items, what I want to point out is that we are not calculating these into the financial plan, which means that these will remain as reserve items for the, uh, for the state should in the future they be needed. Or that if revenue projections or if the governor's proposals are not adequately um, passed at the legislature, these will be funds that could be made available to address any shortfalls or the deficits. The reason we did that, the reason we uh, uh, included it in this manner is we didn't want to preclude what the legislature might do. If I put it in the budget, I would in effect be commanding the legislature in terms of what they want to do in, in, in that regard. And we felt that that was not uh, an appropriate thing, that uh, if we were going to talk about restructuring, then we had to present to the legislature a budget proposal that did not take into account necessarily the expenditure of those funds. I'm perfectly cognizant of the fact that that may come into the picture in terms of the, of, of the discussion but we did not want to preclude 
uh, what the legislature might or might not do in its wisdom with regard to that uh, if I was uh, going to claim a stru structural change. Thank you, Governor. And this slide um, is, a, is an itemization of the revenue measures that have been included as part of the budget and have been submitted to the legislature. Uh, some of the numbers have been um, adapted to where they currently stand is the, the most likely movement of the current status of, at the legislature for the different proposals. But for each of these, uh, the total revenue anticipated if, the, if every proposal was to go is about 233 million in the first fiscal year, 278 million in the second uh, fiscal year for the biennium. On the expenditure side, the different measures and efforts uh, from de departments are underway could garner about a $193 million in savings and $212 million in savings in the second fiscal year. Moving to the overall operating budget, this is uh, the, the change in the budget that was presented in December 20th. For the operating budget, we're looking at about $491 million additional in 2012 and another $238 million in 2013 fiscal year. If you look at those by departments, uh, <clears throat> the big one in 2012 is in the Department of Labor, and uh, that's due to un the uh, unemployment benefits um, costs. And then in terms of the general fund specifically, for the, it's, it's 134 million in the first fiscal year, 160 million in the second. Uh, the big areas here is actually in the area of debt service in the budget and finance area. Now getting to uh, some specifics in relations to the, those items that were previously included in the uh, general fund financial plan, but they were not previously included in the base budget. Um, here you see the areas of the COFA client Medicaid funding is an additional 13.2 million in each of the next fiscal years. You better explain what COFA is. Uh, COFA is the compact of free associated states or the uh, uh, pro providing that health insurance for um, uh, that those immigrant populations that by federal uh, mandate uh, we are to provide coverage for. In the TANF area 